This USB power adapter was handed to me a moment ago, and I was told it was stepped on accidentally. And the top unfortunately popped off and was nowhere to be found. Oh well, I guess you can see the crack here. I don't actually remember which product the power adapter came from. Now, these 5 volts power adapters are just everywhere. To be fair, I'm not sure if it is because the top is missing or what, but you can see the case feels really flimsy here, and you can see it flexes quite a bit when I gently press on it. Let's actually take the board out and take a peek, since this kind of adapters are usually glued shut, and I rarely get a chance to open one up. Wow, there's not a whole lot going on here. And it looks like the main input pins are just simply pressed onto these two contacts here. I'm not sure if you can see inside, we have these two tabs at the very bottom. Those are from the main input, and those are essentially pressed onto the board here. By the look of it, there seems to be just that one 8-pin chip that does all the work. Now, there doesn't seem to be any optocouplers between the primary and the secondary of the windings here. So, I assume this is a design purely rely on the feedback through either the primary or a separate winding of the flyback transformer. The chip used here is an S7133B, and there's not a whole lot of information on this chip. But I did find some reference design, and from the schematics, we can confirm that the feedback is indeed done via a separate winding. This design actually provides a lot of benefits, as it inherently allows higher voltage isolation and faster feedback loop. But the load regulation accuracy is not as precise as the one that utilizes an optical coupler for feedback. And of course, the IC is just one part. The overall quality depends on other components used as well. Now, I don't even see a marking on the output electrolytic capacitor, and that certainly does not instill a lot of confidence. And also, there's no main side noise filtering at all. For a quality power adapter, even a small one, you'd expect there's at least some common mode choke to suppress switching noise. But those components are apparently optional here on this cheap power adapter. And where is the fuse? You can see we have a footprint for fuse here, but there is no fuse installed on the side. Oh, wait a minute. You've got to be kidding me. Yep. You see here, they actually use this PCB trace as a fuse. Wow. I mean, I have seen PCB traces used as fuse before in some low voltage applications, but for a high voltage application like this, this is just asking for trouble. First of all, this is roughly a one millimeter trace. So I guess it takes a couple of amps for it to fuse. And that is simply too much current for this tiny adapter. And secondly, in a high energy event, the trace would probably rupture and the PCB would probably burn. Since it's not contained, the sputter copper would end up somewhere else, shorting the circuit if it lands on the wrong spot, which can cause further damage to your circuit. And also the gap here you can see is not that wide at all, so arcing could still occur, even if the copper trace is melted, which is definitely a fire hazard. Now, I'm tempted to put high current through this trace just to see what happens. But before I do that, let's put a load on this adapter and see how hot it gets. I'm going to leave it out of the case so we can easily monitor the temperature. Well, I just put on a load and the setup is a little bit convoluted because I wanted to see actually what the measured voltage is at the power adapter side because the wiring is quite long here. And we already have our first issue here. As you can see on the spec, the power adapter is spec to be able to output 2 amps. But right now I'll show you, I can't really get to 2 amps. Right now you can see we're outputting 1.6 amps. The output voltage is at 5.27 volts. So that's okay. But let me try to increase the output. Right now 1.7 amps. 1.8, you can see we're already dropping to 4.7 volts. 1.9. And basically, the unity cut off. As you can see, we don't have an output voltage anymore. So basically, the maximum current you can draw really is just around 1.8 amps. And you can see, even 1.8 amps, right now, it is not able to do it. So let's reduce it to 1.7 amps. 
and let's run like this for a while and take a look at the thermal profile of that power adapter. And you can see that power adapter is already very toasty. Right now the maximum temperature is 188 degrees. So that's just on this side. Let's uh, carefully flip it over and see what is on the bottom side. Wow! As you can see, everything is just so hot. It is 174 degrees down here. And certainly that is going to be even hotter if you enclose it in that enclosure. So clearly this is not designed to be able to sustain this kind of output current. Right now we're just at 1.7 amps and it's already this hot. So we can see the power rating is nowhere near the maximum rated 2 amps. All right, now let's do some destructive testing to see in the worst case scenario what would happen to this PCB trace fuse. I'm tempted to apply mains voltage across the trace directly. What do you think? Yes? All right, let's do it. Please don't try this at home. All right, three, two, one. All right, three, two, one. And that was spectacular. The trace was totally evaporated. Anyway, that's why you should not use PCB trace as fuse in mains voltage applications. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. I will catch up with you next time.